Hey everybody, how is it going? Today we'll be recreating Suki's Honda S2000 from the intro race of Too Fast Too Furious using the new Dinka RT3000. So really quickly before we get started, you can purchase the Dinka RT3000 from the Southern San Andreas Super Autos website for a default price of $1.7 million or a trade price of around $1.3 million. Then after all the exterior modifications for this replica build, the total cost will be anywhere between $1.55 million all the way up to $1.98 million depending on the price that you paid initially for the car and you can add around $150,000 to that price if you choose to do the other performance upgrades. This build definitely isn't cheap but the final product looks great and overall the RT3000 offers good performance and it's also one of the best cars for drifting out of the entire tuners update in my opinion. Anyways we're now going to get started with the build. Keep in mind that I'm going to skip over all of the performance upgrades and just focus on the aesthetic stuff. Alright, so starting off with the bumpers, for the front bumper we chose the street bumper. In my opinion, all of the other front bumpers look a little bit too aggressive because they add extra lips and canards and stuff, so in my opinion the street bumper is the best match to the Veilside bumper on Suki's car. And then for the rear bumper, I chose the street bumper because the general shape with the cutouts match up really well with the veil side rear bumper on Suki's car. However, this bumper does leave a fair amount of empty space around the exhaust area. So if you wanted to, you could also just leave the rear bumper stock. Next up for the engine, the engine block is left stock. So that way it matches up with that stock red S2000 valve cover in Suki's car. We also leave the cam cover stock. The same thing goes for the strut brace, we just leave it off because Suki's car did not have one. And then we also leave the air filter stock as well. Moving on to the exhaust, we chose the twin chrome tip exhausts. Even though the tips are pretty small, I still think they're the best match to the exhaust setup on Suki's car. Next up for the headlight covers, we just leave them stock. Then the same thing goes for the fenders, we just leave them stock as well. Next up we have the grill, and we also leave this stock because Suki's car didn't have any sort of intercooler or anything like that. Moving on to the hood, we ended up going with the double vented hood. Even though it does add the two pins up front and also kind of messes up the livery, I still think it's the closest match to that dual vented hood on Suki's car. Next up we have the interior. For the dash, we just leave it stock. The same thing goes for the doors, we just leave them stock as well. Then for the seats, there's two options that I think would work. The painted sports seats are one good option because they keep the two-tone look like the seats in Suki's car. Even though the accent color is black as opposed to white, and unfortunately you cannot change this, the style of the seats still look pretty close to the ones in Suki's car. The other good option that I ended up choosing for my build are the painted tuner seats because these seats can be painted all pink and also have harnesses like Suki's car did. However, they don't have that two-tone look. Then, last but not least, we have the steering wheel, and for this I chose the Apex Clubbin wheel. In my opinion, this is the best match to the Sparkle wheel in Suki's car, plus it also has the two nitrous buttons. Next up for the lights, for the headlights, we just leave them stock. Next up in the neon kits, we chose the layout of the front, back, and sides. And then for the color, I chose a hot pink. Another really good match is the pony pink. In reality, the neons on Suki's car were a shade of pink that in my opinion looks right in between a hot pink and pony pink. So in that case, I think both colors would work. Next up for the livery, there's two main options I think would work. The one that I chose for my build is the Sword Boy livery because I think in general the style of this livery matches up the best with the graphics on Suki's car. Even though the character with this livery is a guy as opposed to the girl that's on Suki's car, the color scheme and just the general look of the stripes are still a really good match. However, the other option you could go with if you wanted to is the Princess Robot Bubblegum livery as it has a pretty similar aesthetic to the girl character that's on Suki's car. However, it does add those big blue stripes and the rainbow accents all around the car, which in my opinion doesn't match up all that well with the graphics on Suki's car. In general though, I'm really surprised that Rockstar didn't give us a livery that was closer to the one on Suki's car in the movie, especially because they've given us so many Fast and Furious liveries in the past. This kind of stinks, but still, I think the livery options I covered are generally pretty close. Next up for the mirrors, we just leave them stock. Then, moving on to the plate, we chose the blue on white one plate as it best matches the style of the Florida plate that's on Suki's car. And if you guys want to make a custom plate with the number on her car, it is W3E566. 
Next up, we have the respray. Now for the primary color, I chose a metallic Fister pink. A lot of people might go with the hot pink, but I think it's a bit too bright. In my opinion, the Fister pink with the pearlescent matches up better with the house of color pink that was used on Suki's car. And obviously with that said, for the pearlescent color, I chose a Cabernet Red. I think this really helps to bring out the pink color and really makes it pop without changing the shade too much. Next up for the secondary color, I went with a metallic Fister Pink once again to match up with the primary color. Then for the trim color, I chose a Salmon Pink to match up with that light shade of pink in Suki's interior. And then finally for the accent color, I just kept it ice white. Next up we have the roof, and of course for this we have to go with the Dinka Roadster option. Then we have the splitters, and for this the best match is the plastic splitter. I think the carbon splitter is also a decent match, but I think it's a little bit too long. Next, moving into the spoiler, there's two good options that I think would work for this. The first good option is the low spoiler since it matches the painted look of Suki's wing. However, it is still pretty low and doesn't have those metal supports. The other good option that I ended up choosing for my build was the Carbon Wing Type 2 spoiler. Even though it is carbon, I think it better matches the height of the wing on Sugi's car. Next up for the sun strips, we just leave it off. Then we have the suspension, and for this I chose the competition suspension. And next up we have the wheels, and for this I chose the chrome organic type 0 wheels in the sports category. However, I also think that the Venom and Dash VIP wheels from this same category are also pretty good matches. Additionally, both the Venom and the Dash VIP wheels are also accessible in the Chrome SUV wheels category. For whatever reason, the Venom wheels are instead called the Empowered wheels, even though there's really no difference between them. And as I've been mentioning in all of my other recent replica builds, if you guys have any other suggestions for wheels that you think would work, feel free to drop them in the comments. Then obviously for the wheel color we can't change this because they're chrome. And then for the tires, for the tire design, we just left it stock. And then we also leave the stock tire smoke. And last but not least, for the window tints, I just left them stock. And yeah guys, those are all of the modifications you'll need to turn the Dinka RT3000 into Suki's Honda S2000 from Too Fast Too Furious. Now even though the final product isn't perfectly matched to her car, this is the best match that we can achieve now in GTA 5. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this replica build and found it helpful. Now if you did, feel free to drop a like on the video, leave your feedback in a comment down below, and also do consider subscribing to my channel if you want to see more replica builds like this one. Also, if you guys have suggestions for future builds you'd like to see, or you want to see any other type of content from me, don't hesitate to let me know. With that all said, I hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.